Okay, as normal, <laughs> nothing like being thrown into the deep end. We're here in the middle of Cambridgeshire, uh, or the Fens. Uh, where it's, uh, I've got a clue where I am. All I know is I'm sort of past Cambridge, near Huntingdon way that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a private water. Uh, I'm told it's very good for a bite as, a, as we're coming into winter now. So um, there's a bit of sort of rubbish and a bit of chod still on the bottom. So I'm just going to go out with two little whites on uh, on running chods on lead core. I've lost a toss, there's five fish out of the swim next door. Uh, obviously I'm rubbish at draws and tosses, so Jake's won that, he's got in the flyer. If he doesn't catch, he's gonna royally get loads of stick, uh, which I won't let him forget about for the duration of the session. So uh, I'm quite excited, there's quite a lot of 20s in here. So I think if we get a bite, it could be a good fish, you know. So uh, we're just gonna get them out. It's very, very deep. I've just had a little cast with my first rod that I've got out. Um, and I actually made a brew by the time my little one ounce lead had hit the bottom. So much to the amusement of Matt and Jake. So um, we're gonna get this one out and hopefully we're gonna catch a couple. I am quite excited. I like all this, you know, new water. I'm fished with Jake before and hopefully we can get a couple for the camera. So I'll flick this out. Obviously, if I got any more than two rod lengths, I'm in 60 foot. So uh, it's only a little cast with a little lead. So uh, hopefully, They'll have something uh, to report a bit later. Right, we've come up to uh, the flyer with Mr. Lund. First time I've uh, I've met you, Jake. Pleasure. Uh, like I said before, I lost a toss through a rigged coin. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we just come up for a brew. We've got rods out now, and uh, it's a bit windy, but it's warmed up ever so slightly. So, what uh, what are your thoughts, Jake? Well, what uh, what have you got out there? There's a uh, low pressure coming in this afternoon, this evening. A bit of cloud coming over. Mm -hmm. It's only going to get better. It's so deep out here. Mm. Need that pressure to drop to get them down, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen one, though, are not you? Right between your rods, haven't you? Yeah, I've seen one show the same distance I'm fishing. Mm. Um, 60 foot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> first cast went a bit far. It was, I don't know, it was ridiculously deep. So yeah, yeah. Come back a bit shorter, about 15 foot. So, yeah, I think it's about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, um, what you using rigs wise and, uh, and bait well, wise? I'm using the source. I've got um, a bottom bait on one. It's quite a clean bottom, but on the other. Put a uh, on a new source fluoro pop ups. Oh, that white one, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully that'll produce the goods. I think yeah. it's good for a quick bite. But uh, you've been here before, haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah, I've you... done two sessions on here in the winter last year. Mm. Um, and caught both times, haven't you? Uh, no, I lost one the first time, caught one the second time. Um, it was a bit slow. Mm. But, um, but I think because of the depth. Uh, I think it fishes quite quite a way through, doesn't it? It takes a lot longer oh, for yeah. it to cool down. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, um, back in the last winter, it was in, in 30 foot of water. Really? It's crazy. So yeah. Obviously. They're more comfortable there when it's cold, I would have thought. Were they showing last winter? Because it was later in the year you came, yeah. was it January, January you came? Time. January time. It, it looked pretty bleak, to be honest with you. Did it? Yeah. It did, did you see any fish? Uh, I think I see, well, I, I see one show, but I couldn't be sure it was a carp, to be honest. Mm. So, but Mikey, he had three, didn't he? Do you have three twenty yeah, pounders? Mike did really well. Yeah, Mike, Mike was fishing on the uh, on the red ammo. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he had he had three twenty pounders. Mm. See, Matt's uh, he's told us to go easy on the bait, and I'm really yeah. tempted to put quite a bit in on the basis yeah, well, that it's. Uh, like sees a lot of a lot of bait. Yeah. So I'd imagine they're a little bit hungry. I'm going to fish just uh, just a pound for each rod today, but tonight I'm probably going to put a kilo out. I reckon. Oh, I'm itching to. Fill it in. <laughs> I really, I just, it's quite barren, isn't it? At the bottom, you get a really good drop, don't yeah. you? But, yeah, um, it's the ideal place for scattering a big bed of board. Yeah, there. yeah, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna do it just yet. I'd like to get a bite before dark if possible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I, see, I think it's a case of waiting for that, that pressure to drop to All push right. them down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I see one bit further to my left. Probably the similar distance out to where you saw yours, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, uh, I bought no particle. I wish I had it done now. 
yeah. on the basis that it might pull them. Yeah, 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 may may yeah. pull them down a bit. But um, yeah. Matt's confident we will get a bite. Um, yeah. Well, obviously there's more pressure down. on you. Yeah. Uh, just for the record, this swim did do five fish last week, four of which were 20 pounders up to 28. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I aren't going to sort of reiterate that fact at every opportunity, you know, especially if he doesn't catch anything, and I do, out of the duffer, and obviously Jake's in the flyer. So, uh, but no, we were... Uh, You're panicking here. <laughs> You're panicking, I'm actually installing the panic into you. But, um, yeah, we, there's somebody else on, uh, he's just up in the corner and he had one, more or less straight away uh, off the back of the wind, which is uh, which is something to bear in mind. I think the wind's picking up um, now, and it's sort of blowing down the other end, and it. I've just yeah. and it's the water's still quite murky. Matt tells us that it goes crystal clear here yeah. in the winter, so yeah. obviously there's still fish feeding, and the, you know the Definitely. water clarity isn't yeah. great, so there's still yeah. something murking around. So, uh, mm. well, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll do some carp stuff now. Eh? We'll, it That's all it. falls under the banner of carp stuff, so we'll do some carp stuff, which basically means put the kettle on, <laughs> and. Uh, and then we'll check back in later when Jake's still blanking and I've had a 30 pounder, so... Uh, I'm we'll just going to keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, me with all the lip, giving it all the big in, and then Jake's probably going to catch a 30 pounder, which, which would be nice, so uh, we'll talk to you a bit later. Just put this one straight on a fishy's head. 10 minutes ago? Yeah, 10 minutes. And uh, the alarms were on on the heads, and I heard a beep, and then I see the tip <laughs> bent round <laughs> uh, because my receiver's up with Jake. So uh, I'm into one. Quite nervous because there's a lot of good fish in here. I think there's a couple of little posts here and I was just skimming. I was just skimming that with this cast, it was slightly down to the left. So it was definitely caught on something. But we've got one on. The old Lund Master's going in and his wellies look. And there's nothing like, oh dear. Losing the toss to the flyer <laughs> and then hooking one. Oh, he's not a bad one. Yay! <laughs> one nil to Tong. <laughs> Out the unfancied area. Yes, 20. Definitely, yeah. Nice, nice. Oh, it doesn't splash me. <laughs> oh, that's an easy mid 20. Oh, oh, Mr. Rand. We'll turn it round for you. And Jake can read it out. Look at that, I've got a bit of a shake on. You're 26'8. <laughs> we'll have some of that in the uh, middle of November. He's in absolutely in amazing condition. Uh, after getting me lying off the snag, <laughs> he did scrap quite well, it's quite deep. Uh, and I just think there's a few in that little uh, that little zone. But to get something that uh, that size straight away is uh, it's pressure off me, uh, and obviously now I won't be ribbing Jake even more in the flyer, you know, won the toss. I've, uh, I've fl flew one out the uh, the dead zone. <laughs> so it's all on you now, Jake. <laughs> you can. Absolutely lovely carp, that one. Right, I risk getting a wet foot. And it's very close. <laughs> so we'll just get him back. Because there's half a dozen 30 pounders in here. 
so uh, one of those next would be uh, would be nice. Absolutely made up with that. Right, God knows what I'll catch tonight. I'm going to give them five kilos of tiger nut. <laughs> into the session now and uh, Ian's off the mark so he's looking quite happy <laughs> and also a few fish showing down uh, his end his moose swim so yeah I'll, I'll let him know about it <laughs> I think he's keen to no I've just been blinded by the lights um, from the obviously from the polo club behind uh, but uh, yeah we are hearing quite a few where I've moved but I, we, we do I don't put any bait out um, because every time I put the catty up, one shows, and I kind of don't want to spook them, and that's the area I had the fish from, isn't it? So, but we do think that they're probably sitting at some depth above uh, where my rig is, or rigs are, should I say? Well, I think you should put some bait out. Spook Jake, them my way. Jake, <laughs> Jake's of the opinion that I should fill it in, loads of bait, and then out. spook them, and then they come up here. Um, Matt, we think Matt's just hooked a sturgeon on a. A size 16 hook and uh, a caster, so uh, it wouldn't have counted anyway. We just hope it was a carp because then I would have caught one, Matt would have caught one on a technique that doesn't technically count, and Jake would still be blanking. Plus, he's still obviously in the flyer. So, we obviously, as you can tell, we aren't uh, we aren't ribbing him about anything. They're obviously quite happy they can <laughs> with me. Obviously feeling the pressure. But no tonight I'm gonna have the big girls out. <laughs> but we have we have, they are moving a bit this way aren't they? They're moving up they a bit. We, There's we, a lot of fish showing on your end but they have been creeping up eh? But they're so localised aren't they? There's nothing to the left of where I've moved is there? They're all in that one area which is where we saw and to be fair we were sitting by your brolly weren't we? Yeah. Um, and then I went back to my to uh, oh. <sighs> Encouraging. Ooh, oh, I better check that out. Jake's just had a liner. It's never a carp. Probably the wind or some weeds blowing on it. But I'll be amazed if he uh, he doesn't catch. Oh, there was one, and that was right in front of where we're sitting, which is I think they're definitely moving up. But he will catch one, and I hope he does. Just not as big as 26 and a half, which is obviously what I caught. <laughs> but, uh, what's happening, Jake? I got the liner. That yeah. bit of sturgeon? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I put a bit of pellet out, trying to. We've just heard one here as well, oh, literally yeah. right in front of where Matt's, uh, Matt's Brivia, so I do, I do think they're moving yeah. up. It's encouraging, eh? But they are localised, aren't they? Right, obviously, right, you know, the, it's, uh, it's gone a bit cooler, the skies have cleared. Yeah, the temperature's dropped, isn't it? The temperature has dropped, yeah. But um, because of the depth, we're uh, we're told that they 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 do carry on feeding well into December. So um, apparently, it's night time bites as well. So it's good you have to mark so soon. But I think tonight, you know, because yeah. Yeah, but I'm old. I don't want to catch them in the night because I need me sleep. Uh, You're young and keen and fit. <laughs> so I hope, fit. <laughs> I hope you catch ten and then you have no sleep. <laughs> so uh, it's looking promising. Yeah, um, I'm still not going to put any bait out, much to your disappointment. <laughs> Get a spot out of the market. <laughs> but no, it is looking very promising, so uh, we'll see what the next few hours bring. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be too long. No, I don't. Certainly for me, not for you. No. <laughs> 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 Happy days. Oh. This 
Oh, well, good for Jake. What you got, mate? Uh, that looks a mid twenty mirror. You bigger than twenty six? Oh, I'm, I'm hoping so, but I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> mate, that's a right result. Yeah, it's cool. Left hand rod. Left hand rod, yeah. And the bottom bait source. That one you're getting liners on. Yeah. Nice uh, mid twenty mirror. And the source bottom bait. Got cold last night, eh, didn't it? Yeah, I retired to me back quite early. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's even the scores up. I, yeah, it's um, good. I've rehearsed all my, uh, <laughs> all my abuse for you, and then you've... Uh, yeah, I, I was... I'm not going to lie, I was quite happy to get one. Mate, I, as a result, <laughs> two twenty pounders as well is... Uh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? At this time of year, is a proper... Especially, result, this temperature's plummeted. Yeah, it's the so. wind that's chilled everything down, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. They were really active last night, weren't they? Yeah, I, was, I started getting a few liners on the uh, left hand rod. Mm -hmm. Which is over the over the um, about half a kilo of sauce. You put pellet out as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. Well, it's so deep in that. I put a bit of pellet, try and sort of you know pull them down. Pull them down, yeah. Not not a lot. I didn't want to get preoccupied with it. Yeah. But um, yeah. got a few liners, and yeah, I was um, your rod. I don't have to go. That'll be two one then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's get it back, mate. We'll see. Right. Uh, we we'll see if we can move around and probably catch another one, possibly. <laughs> Awesome, mate. That, that's a lovely clean first start. Right. Making a brew. Uh, because it's a bit warmer in my swim, so because uh, Jake's a bit tender because he's young, we're all hiding under my brolly, and straight out of the blue, I get an absolute flyer. No liners, we haven't seen nothing show, nothing. So uh, Jake's trying to look a bit more enthusiastic, but this is like a dagger in his heart, you see. He's, he's pulled back to one each, and uh, the old dog tongue is a uh, Just gone two one up. <laughs> go Tong, go Tong. Hey, you want to see the clay on it? Clay? Yeah. Or it's head and shoulders and all that. That'll do for me. So there we go. Twenty-nine pound five. Uh, much to the amusement of Jake. Uh, Tong takes a two-one advantage. Uh, but it came totally out of the blue. That did. Um, it was the rod that I was getting liners on, and weirdly, Jake was having loads of liners on his on his left rod. And then he got a bite on that. So whether they've cleared us out, um, but yeah, twenty-nine pound five uh, in the middle of November is not to be sniffed at. And um, you know, I think it, it just goes to show that it, whilst it looked dead, uh, it just ripped off straight out of the blue. So um, a proper result this one. Right, this is the rig that I've had, uh, I've had both the fish on. Uh, nothing fancy. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm feeding tiger nut because I'm just so confident in the monster tiger nut and these are just uh, the, st the sauce pop-ups just a white pop I just love white pop-ups over anything um, and it's just a choddy on lead core just a little chod buffer just to comfort the, the fight when you're playing the fish um, about six foot of lead core probably about five foot between uh, the beads uh, just so the chod sort of sits where it wants there's a bit of there's a bit of debris on the bottom here. It's a bit weedier here than where it was up the top end. I've moved down when I had that 26. I moved down to get a better line angle on them. Uh, and there's a bit more weed. So it's, it, the, the chuddy just, it just suits it perfectly. You know, moving on, plop, plop, couple of, couple of little casts, small little stubby ounce and a half lead. It's quite deep, you know, I reckon I'm fishing in 18, 20 foot of water now. Uh, but the fish live in it. They don't seem to mind picking the rig up there. But very bizarre, like I say, I moved on and I heard loads of fish in the evening and in the night uh, and got the liners on the right hand rod and then out the blue it just flies off and it catches a 29 pounder you know it's, it's bizarre they've definitely eaten the bait so um, we've just had an occurrence on this on the left rod don't know if it's the fish when we put the fish back we're swimming through the line but we're not sure it sort of tightened up and the rod tip bent and I thought it was going to go so I've either been spat out that hook is still razor sharp that uh, that razor point is so I don't think it was a pickup or I tell myself it wasn't just on the fact that I've probably just been done <laughs> so um, yeah nothing complicated I just love this rig 
I can move on to fish. This is where it really comes into its own, where you can move, plop, plop, and you know it's not tangled. It's fishing, it doesn't matter what it's technically landed on, you know, the weight of the lead core and the little lead, it just pulls the hook home. So it's just a rig I love, you know, and, and I don't think I'll ever stop using this rig. I think it works so much for me. People say, oh, it's not proper fishing because you've not meticulously found a spot. Well, if you're moving on to fish like I did last night, you ain't going to start throwing a marker rod out because all you're going to do is you're going to ruin your chances of catching anything before you've even cast a rig out. You know, you defeated the object of actually moving on to them. So in this instance, plop, plop, couple of chods and you're fishing and there you go, 29 pounder. So it does work. So I'm just going to change the bait. I'm going to put this out and then hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get another one before we wrap it up and go home. So uh, we'll just get that bait on now. We're just going to run you through my small water setup. Uh, now this is a typical, uh, it's an irrigation, it's about six acres and it's only, oh, what, 80 yards wide, 90 yards wide. Uh, now normally I probably would have turned up with me three and a quarters just because I love them, I know what they can do uh, and, me, and me old Chega CI4s. Um, so what I've got now, I've got a separate setup of uh, the 12 foot 2 and 3 quarter XS ones and I've teamed them up with the, the 10,000 X aero bait runners um, and I've got 12 pound Invisitech line which for a mono sinks really well for a mono I love using fluoro but obviously if I'm going to use a mono I want something that it sinks a lot better than some of the other monos on the market so uh, the Invisitech does that perfectly um, and I've got the single handle 10,000 absolutely joy to play fish on it's almost i don't want the fight to end you know that 29 pounder it came in quite easy and because the rod is sort of bent really well over and you feel like you're having so much fun if, if that's the phrase i want to use with the bait runner and the lower test curve rod compared to a big pit and a three and a quarter or a three and a half and it's just it's an absolute joy to play fish on and you do forget the art of small water fishing I think because you get a bit over gun but yeah the rods are very very lovely like a carbon real seat full Japanese shrink got a little butt stop behind that goes behind um, your backrest just to stop the rod going in really minimalistic finish 50 to 60 mil guides so again you know if you do want to punch it 70 80 yards of fluorocarbon the line's going to flow through them rings really well and they look like a million dollars, you know, they're not mega expensive rods, um, but they look really, really nice. And it's just a joy to play fish on. It's actually a joy to use them. Um, and I'll just, I want to use this setup a lot more, if I'm honest. Um, I'm really getting into using these old fashioned bait ones with a single handle, really well balanced. You just get a lot more feel on the cast. Very, very accurate. You know, you could just like plop them on really on a dustbin lid, wherever you want to put it. You know, you've, you've really got a bend. And even with an ounce and a half lead, it really does compress a two and three quarter rods. So if you're going to have a, another setup, don't get something that's too similar to what you've already got. So don't have a set of three and halves or three and three quarters and then three and a quarters. Get something that's a lot different that you're actually going to feel the difference when you're using that setup. So for me, XS1, two and three quarters, 10,000 X, X aero bait runners is absolutely the perfect setup for waters of this size. And it's an absolute joy to play and land a fish on that setup. Okay, well, Ian's had two now, I've had one, um, both using the sauce. Ian's been fishing um, the new sauce white fluoros um, on a choddy over a uh, monster tiger nut. I think he's using it for the visual factor. Um, however, I've been fishing the sauce. Um, oh, liner. I've been fishing uh, one on the bottom bait and uh, one on the pop up. Fish I caught last night was on um, the bottom bait rod. I fished it over half a kilo body. I also put out some uh, marine halibut just to try and draw the fish down. It's very deep here, and um, I think the oils in the water might, might put them down. Well, it worked. It worked this morning anyway. So yeah, um, but yeah, the sauce soon it's been released in these uh, one kilo resealable bags, which is good. So you haven't got to, you know, you can reseal it and it's going to stay fresh. Also comes in um, five kilo bags which I think you can get at a slightly better price if you want to put a fair bit of bait in. It's certainly a good bait, nice rich colour. It's certainly done the uh, test of time. It's been a winner for years. To be honest, I normally use the uh, Monster Tiger nut, but I just thought I'd give something different a go. Um, 
So I thought I'd give this, this sauce a go, and I'll be honest with you, I think it's a blinding bait. I mean, you crack one open and give it a smell, it just smells so carpy and so rich in goodness. And obviously it's a good bait, like, it's good enough for Terry and it's good enough for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, last night I fished um, just a simple bottom bait rig, nice long shank hook, and um, it, it, it did the trick. It's, uh, it's warmed up a little bit now, so it's looking good for a bite. There's still time yet. But either way, free fish between us, it's, it's been a good result. There we go. Uh, pack up time. Uh, I still haven't got a clue where we are. Somewhere in the middle of Cambridge, aren't we? Yeah. Um, just follow the sat now on the way. But what a session. We've had, uh, we've had three really lovely fish, 23, 26 and a 29. Uh, we've used different tactics, haven't we? Different yeah, rigs, you know, yeah. and uh, it's a bit cold now. The wind is obviously relentless, but uh, we think we've just seen one show. But because of the depth, we don't really know where that uh, was in comparison to the uh, where the fish was sitting. But uh, no, it's been great, hasn't it? To be honest, I think it, that temperature dropped so much. I think we've done well to get free fish. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, for, and for that size in the middle of November is yeah. uh, is a good hit, isn't it? It's good. It's good. Um, I'd really come back. I'd, we're told it does fish through in, into the winter, but depending on if. Oh, that would be uh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Equal the scores up for two two, just as I'm going. Um, but because of the depth, I think um, with, when the weather's up and down, the fish tend to go up and down with the weather. So uh, I think you could bait this and have quite a few in the winter. So I think I'd definitely like to come back because to catch three fish that size in these conditions, yeah. it's great, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah. uh, there's a few thirties in. So I'm just waiting for the text when I'm driving home. He's had a thirty pounder. And then he'll think he's had the other. Yeah, it would make. But no, I've uh, really enjoyed it. Try no, don't. We don't want that, do we? We don't want that going off. Because obviously, once I've gone, the match is over. Not as it was a match. No. I've just turned it into a match. <laughs> but, uh, mate, appreciate it. No, it really, mate. Well really done, good mate. 24 hours. Yeah, and 2 uh, 1 to the old pro. <laughs> See you soon.